Your vehicle ever looked like that? Mine's getting pretty, pretty bad. So I've been doing all, a lot of recoveries lately and every week or two I'll try and uh, go through it and clean it all out. Problem is, is things get wet and uh, recoveries take quite a few hours sometimes. And when I get home, I don't feel like dealing with what's within the back of the, the trunk area. So um, I'm like, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes around and I'll do another recovery and it just never gets done. So at least every uh, you know week or two, like I said, if not twice a month, I'll go through, I'll organize everything, I'll clean it back out, put everything back where it's supposed to be. But this is a hot mess. And uh, these straps are soaked from recovery a few days ago. I mean, you can tell like that thing is pretty bad. But um, take it all out hose it down kind of show you guys what equipment i use on the day-to-day -day basis what i use the most what i don't use as much um and then maybe you know how to use it like soft shackles snatch blocks stuff like that and just you know i do this quite often i figured today i'd, I'd make a video out of it also when i pull this stuff out it gives me a chance to inspect it for damage so this strap right here one of the big four inch straps it looks like it's been ran over it's got some you know tearing on it this honestly isn't too bad i'm gonna keep using this strap if it gets worse you know i'm gonna keep an eye on it but i've had them in worse condition than that and they still hold up if they get too bad though send it in uh you know lifetime warranty on all this stuff through rhino uh, but they will take some abuse you know it's, it's normal for them to get ran over as long as there's not like a big you know slice in it or you know a hole in it or something like that then they're you're still you know, they're a little bit compromised. They probably don't have their maximum brake strength anymore, but they're still gonna hold up for, for what we use it for. All right, so this is what we got. Axle straps. You guys, if you watch my videos, you see I use these things a ton. Um, this is probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment, the most useful because they're so small and they can get in under those control arms or tow packages or, um, you know, use them as bridles. There are multiple uses for these things. Um, one thing about these is they are rated for 10,000 pound brakes. So when using this, you have to remember that this is probably the weakest link in your setup. If something's gonna break, it's gonna be these because typically when we use them, we're using them with D-rings, toe straps, snatch blocks. All this stuff has much higher brake strength ratings than, than axle straps, but still uh, they work great. They're awesome. Snatch blocks are great. This is mandatory for any winch kit. Uh, pretty simple I know a lot of people aren't familiar with them have never used them uh, basically you just slide your winch line you open it up like this you see it's grooved slide your winch line cable or synthetic doesn't really matter close it put your d-ring on the end of it <clears throat> connected to your toe strap or whatever you want and then your line comes in loops around and goes back out to an anchor point so you never have too many toe straps I mean, if you watch my recent video, the Jeep Wrangler, I used all of my toe straps. I could have used probably two more if I had them. I prefer the big four inch straps. These are rated for over 40,000 pound brake strength. Um, we do have, this is probably the most common seller, is the three inch by 20 foot or three inch by 30 foot toe strap. These are rated for 30,000 pounds. The good thing about Rhino is everything is clearly labeled and marked. Working load limit, brake strength, uh, all that is right there. We have the tree savers. I use these mostly as bridles. Uh, if you look at this one, this thing has probably got the most use out of any piece of equipment I have, minus my receiver shackle down there. Uh, it's been ran over countless times. It is a little damaged, but it still has some life left in it. Um, you, you do want to be aware of you know, any damages, cuts, slices, tears, rips, holes in your, in your equipment uh, It will compromise the brake strength but they definitely can take some abuse and still still keep going let's jump back to this this is a rhino recovery bag these things hold a lot of gear it's a lot of gear um, you can tell mine's well used pockets all over it inside out i typically use this for my winching gear i keep all my snatch blocks my d-rings um, my axle straps and soft shackles and tree savers pretty much all of this stuff right here will fit in that bag uh, and that way, when I know I have to do something winching related, it's all contained, organized right there. Tool roll. These things 
are awesome. If you don't got one, you need to get one. All the pockets are labeled. Uh, they have, they come off. Removable with Velcro. And then it rolls up everything. I mean, wrenches, sockets, you got specialties. Uh, my specialty is, uh, you guys are gonna get a kick out of this. Zip ties and duct tape. That's my specialty right there. But awesome, awesome things. Uh, they can hold a lot of weight. Pretty, pretty robust. You're not gonna, you're not gonna break it. Giant, heavy-duty clips on it. So, load it up, send it. We'll move on to the soft shackles. Uh, basically, a lot of people, you know, you've heard about it, you've seen it, but you're not really sure what it does, right? So, um, soft shackle basically replaces a D-ring. Um, not always, but most of the time. So, all you'd have to do, let me set this up. So basically the soft shackle, you have one end that pull this out, feed the knot through it, pull it tight. So bam, same thing, right? This is how we connect a toe strap. So I'll put, a lot of times I'll connect toe straps and kinetic ropes like this. And I'll put my other end in there, connect them together. They can be a little tight, but pull this out especially when they're brand new when they're brand new they're pretty stiff they need a good couple pulls on them to stretch them out but you see you see the concept there um, difference is this soft shackle believe it or not is rated higher than this d-ring so these have a, i want to say it's 41,850. Um, these are 46,250. it's crazy it's self-tightening and the good thing about these is they float. I tested this the other day. I've always wondered, because most of, most of my recoveries, you know, I'm in mud. And uh, it's kind of hard to tell if something floats in mud. But the other day we were in that creek and I was like, let me try this. And I dropped it in there. Sure enough, it started floating. So the only time you don't want to use a soft shackle is when you're running snatch blocks. So um, it'll probably work and it'll be all right. But Anytime you have metal that has somewhat of a sharp edge, even though these are kind of filed down, they're not really that sharp, but that that's going to be, or that can compromise the rope. We do have the protective sleeve on it. So, I mean, it will work fine, but I just, I don't like doing it that way. I'd rather use a D-ring. I've always preferred D-rings. Um, unless you have that actual like snatch ring style snatch block, totally different. Uh, those are designed for soft shackles, but your traditional snatch block, I recommend using a D-ring on that instead of a soft shackle. Winch line blankets. This is actually just a camera bag, a, a weighted camera bag. It opens up. It has, uh, probably, I don't know, I would say this thing weighs eight, nine, maybe 10 pounds full, full of sand. Probably about a good 10 pounds in there. It's on the uh, winch line and cable, it's always good to have that. Kinetic ropes, everybody's favorite. They're all hyped up right now, you know, and that's it's a good reasoning behind it because they make yanking out vehicles 10 times smoother than using a, a flat strap. Flat strap will work. Kinetic rope is more efficient, more ideal. This is the big one inch rope. This is uh, our one inch uh, rated for 34,000 pound brake strength. It has one of the highest brake strengths for a one inch rope. And not only that, it's one of the most affordable ones you'll find at 139. A lot of kinetic ropes this size are upwards of two or three hundred dollars. This is our seven eighth rope. This one is good for thirty thousand pounds. Seven eighth by twenty foot. The one inch is thirty foot. Um, seven eighth rope. I've used that thing a ton. I probably use that one more than this one just because it it works. Jeep, Toyota, F one fifty this thing is is all you need i personally like to use the bigger one or recommend the bigger one just because you never know what size vehicle you're going to be yanking out or yanking you out so it's always good to, to you know err on the side of caution and get one size larger um, even though that one will pretty much handle whatever you throw out throw at it the only time i probably wouldn't use that one is if you have like two big one tons yanking on it um, you could exceed the weight rating on that uh, but even then I've done it and got away with it receiver shackles hands down 
the most important piece of recovery equipment. If you were to only have one item out of all this, I would tell you get a receiver shackle. Don't yank off of a damn toe ball. Quit doing that. This is the safest way to do it. Uh, these things, again, rated over 40,000 pounds. You see this one? No joke. I have estimated that this single receiver shackle probably has upwards of 300 pulls on it. I'm not even exaggerating. It has about 300 pulls on it. Uh, I inspected it. No cracks. No real damage to it. It's got a little bit of surface rust, but none of that's going to affect or compromise it. Um, but yeah, this thing is used and abused. I've had it for years. I will never get rid of it. Um, it's kind of it's iconic at this point of how many uh, you know recoveries it's done. But I have a second one. You always want a second one because nobody else has them. And when you're yanking off of vehicles, you want closed loop system on both ends. So carry two of those things. Um, this is my just extra bag tire repair kit uh, gauge. We have, you know, just miscellaneous stuff that goes in that. I always carry an extra synthetic winch line. Uh, I've broken one in the past, so having a backup on hand when I need it, it will, will save you. Uh, we have the folding shovel. This thing's pretty cool. Oh, there we go. Locked in. It's got a little pickaxe on it. You can use it as a, as a pick. Um, but you know it's supposed to this tightens down on it so it's not going to fold on you but yeah these things uh a lot of people don't have shovels and you'd be surprised even even something little like this will, will save your butt when you're in the mud trying to dig it out um definitely definitely recommend these they fold up into nothing it doesn't take up any space keep it in the jeep but this is what i use on a daily basis I think the most used pieces of equipment, like I said, are definitely that receiver shackles or those hitch shackles down on the end, axle straps, toe strap, and, you know, D-ring and soft shackles. So if we were to build a beginner kit right here, solid beginner recovery kit right here, um, you could do a lot with this. So you have your hitch shackle, mandatory if you have a toe package, uh, D-rings that you can connect with axle straps to you know that's how you can tow vehicles out that do not have recovery points or factory tow points you can get under there and connect with axle straps soft shackle at least one two preferably tow strap at least one two preferably um, if you want i would say this is the beginner kit if we want to make it an intermediate kit we're going to add a tree saver a snatch block for winching you know if you don't have a winch then you don't need a snatch block um, but i think that would be a good intermediate kit right here this can do a little bit more um, throw a kinetic rope on there that would be a solid intermediate kit and maybe this one you know this will go a long way if you if you only had this you could pretty much handle nine out of ten recoveries um, the rest of this stuff will get you that tenth one because you never really know what you're getting yourself into all right, now keep in mind that this is just recovery gear. This is a first aid kit, um, tools and oils and fluids and uh, fire extinguishers, air compressors, none of that stuff. This is this is just recovery gear. So I do carry a lot more stuff normally, um, you know, all, all of the other stuff I just mentioned. But for today's video, we're just we're just going to focus on actual recovery gear. Then the one thing that is not in this video that if you've noticed, my high lift jack. I pretty much quit carrying that damn thing. I, I never use it. I never use it. It just takes up so much space. I am going to get a bumper mount for it somehow. Um, probably right here somewhere. I, I do want to mount it on the bumper, but in the past, I've just been loading it and unloading it and leaving it in the in the Jeep, and it weighs a lot. And I, out of the years I've been off-roading, um, fortunate enough, I've never actually had to use it. So what, now that I say that, I'm sure next week or something, I'm going to get a blown-out tire, and I but I'll figure it out when that day comes. Uh, until I get my bumper mount, probably not gonna carry it on me too much. I just don't use it. Bottle jack is more compact and works the same. If you guys wanna do recoveries, you know, like you see me doing, get on these Facebook groups. 4x4 Rescue as the name. Um, every state has its own group. So whatever state you're in, just search your state's name with 4x4 Rescue at the end.